good hand. The Lord will give us understanding in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time to come and learn from you. We ask that the spirit of life that comes from your word will flow into us in the name of Jesus. That, Lord, you will quicken us by your word this morning. We will have the true life this morning by your word in the name of Jesus. Let your word come to us as life today. And let it change every situation that we detest in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask that your word will come with power. And we come, O oh God, with understanding and light this morning. And we are lighting every darkness today in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Are you the one thinking, how would that problem we solve be solved? You have a burden in your house. You have something that you want to go through this week and you are thinking, where will the solution come? The Lord will stand for you in the name of Jesus. He will make for a way for you. That thing that you are thinking, oh, this is difficult, it's going to be difficult, God will make it easy for you. Before you get there, the Lord has rolled the stone away in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Our theme this year, uh, let's please control the children for this uh, few minutes. Our theme this year, what the theme, we always have every theme every year, that is God speaks to us certain things and gives us a promise for the whole year. And that is the word of God, the promise of God. And it is very important that you hold on to it. Because when God speaks, he brings it to pass. So when God gives us a theme, it's not just ordinary thing. It is something to hold on to. And we've seen it. When we hold on to it, God fulfills his word concerning us. He said, this year will be our year of rooting and fruiting. We will root downwards and we will fruit upwards. That is, we produce a lot of fruits. And God is sure to keep his promise. God is telling you that this year you will be deeply rooted in him. God will establish you. You know, root is very important to a tree. And we will come to know this morning my topic is importance of roots and, and fruits. So that's what we want to so our theme is from Isaiah uh, 37, verse 31. We will read it again because it must become part of us throughout the year. Because we know that this is the promise of God for us. And God will fulfill it. Uh, Isaiah 37, verse 31. He said, And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall again take root downwards. And bear fruits upward. Like Brother Moses said last week. He said there is that word again. That is it's a repetition. God has said it. Has done it before. He will do it again. We've seen a lot of God's intervention in this church. In our lives. We have testimonies of God's goodness. So God is saying that I will do it again. All those good things that we desire. He said I will do it again. We have prayed, our prayers were that all the things we did not want in the year that we experienced in the year 2020, we have dropped them. We have told God, God, those things, they've gone with 2022. They are not crossing over to the year 2023 with us. And we know that Jesus is the gateway of the year 2023 and is the one we have, we have, we have spoken with. And surely it's going to be, as we have said, in the name of Jesus. So he's saying the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah. And we, don't go to, we won't go into theology of Judah this morning. But we want to know the importance of roots and fruit. And last week, we established some things. We said last week that the stability and strength of the three of the tree is in the rooting. 
God is comparing us to a tree and using it to analyze how our lives ought to be in Christ. The more established we are in Christ, that is the rooting. The strength of a tree is in the is in its and the stability is in the root. Like we said last week, uh, we read uh, Colossians 2, 6 to 7. So, somebody who can quickly read, remind us of that uh, passage. Colossians uh, 2, 6 to 7. What does it say? Colossians 2, 6. Hmm. Hmm. Said and built up in him. Hmm. Yes. He said, as you have received Jesus, he said, walk in him. Be rooted in Jesus. Be rooted when something is rooted. That means roots are, there are different kinds of plants. When I used to do biology in those days, there are, uh, we, we, we know there are plants that are, uh, we, we know the, what we call it, we call it uh, phyto, phyto something, I've forgotten. <laughs> that is, uh, plants that are, uh, we have different kinds of trees, really. So, that are, that are, there are tap-rooted trees. Trees that have roots that grow downwards. And at the same time, they have lateral roots also, you know. But the more, the more, Establish the root of a tree is the more the stability of that tree. There are some plants that produce much uh, leaves, but their roots are called adventitious root. They don't go deep; they grow on the surface. When the wind blows, they are the trees that are easily affected. They can be blown off. They can be, you know, removed from where they are. So, but God is telling us that we should develop a root in Christ. Be established in Christ. Let your faith stand in Christ. Don't be somebody who is, uh, who is, who is here today in Christ today and out there tomorrow. Be somebody who knows Christ. When you know Christ and you stand by him. Your stability is, is established. And that is what the Bible is saying. And God was telling us from the book of uh, Matthew 6, uh, 5 to 6. He said, your father who sees you in the secret. That is, your strength is in the secret. In the secret place. In the place of prayer where people don't see you much. That's where your strength is. Have developed a habit of knowing God in your secret of praying, of reading the Bible. Those are the things that establish you as a Christian. Read the Bible on your own. Be somebody who is testing after God, who is yearning after God. When you yearn after God, you find Him in the secret place. You find Him. You establish an altar unto Him. And that keeps you going. And by the grace of God this year, that is what God wants you to be. And when you are like that, really, you begin to see the advantages of God. And also, apart from a root being, uh, being the stability of the tree also, a root also, the coverage area of the root also helps the root to produce much fruit. You understand? Every year, the trees, the big trees, they have to extend their root. They call it... Uh, uh, Root ears. There's something called root ears. Root ears are small, small roots, uh, microscopic roots that they establish every year. That's what they use to draw water and minerals. You understand? So God expects us to begin to expand our roots. You don't. Uh, roots are not static. They grow every year. So that the more they go, the more they are able to tap resources all around. And that is why Jesus was telling us. He said, occupy till I come. That's Luke 19, 12 to 15. Jesus was saying, he said, 
Occupy till I come. I want us to read that passage. Luke 19, 12 to 15. Luke 19, 12 to 15. Okay, sorry. Uh, that's okay. What I want you to understand is that when Jesus gave this parable, he said a noble, a certain noble man went, wanted to go to a far country and he gave his servants. We are his servants. He said, occupy till I come. Who, say, who gave the commandment for the servants to occupy? The master was the one that gave the son. He said, occupy. So Jesus is telling us, he said, expand. Expand your root. Establish your root. But the Bible says, there is, this thing doesn't go without opposition. The citizens of the land, what did they say? They said, we will not have this man rule over us. There will always be opposition to you to occupy. But Jesus has given you the command, expand your root. For you to be successful this year, expand your root. What are those areas that you are untapped areas? Roots. I talked about root areas. They go into untapped areas. They develop every year to go into areas that have not been tapped. So there are resources in your life that you have not tapped. You have not gone into. The Lord is saying to you. He's giving you a command. Look at those business areas. Look at those spiritual opportunities that you have not got into. He said, go into them. But there are circumstances that will be telling you, oh, you can't do this. It's too much. You can't do this. But God is the one that said, occupy. So you need to follow the, the commandment of the master. Go into those untapped areas of your life, brethren. And God is telling you this morning that he is the one that is sending you to go into those areas. Expand your root. Expand your, te the, your, your tentacles. And the power of God will go with us this year in the name of Jesus. Untapped resources. Untapped areas. Let prayers go into them. Are those things that you need? Uh, to man, it looks impossible because there are oppositions. There are those that we say, no, we do not want this man to rule over us. We do not want you to get those resources. There, are, there will be opposition. But God is telling you, go into them. And he will give you victory in the name of Jesus. So what you need really is to abide in Christ. To abide in Christ. To, to stay in Christ. When you abide in him, he will give you the words of understanding, the words of wisdom, the word of knowledge into those untapped areas. And he will begin to lead us into the areas we have not tapped. So the, Jesus told us in the, the book of John chapter 15. John 15 from verse 1 to 8. It says, I am the, John 15, 1 to 8. It says, I am the true vine. And my father is the husband man. Jesus is telling us that is the vine and his father is the farmer. He said, Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, it takes away. And every branch that bear fruit, it purgeth it that it may bring forth 
more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken to unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruits of itself, except it abides in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into fire, and they are born. If ye abide in me, and my words in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit, so that your, so shall ye be my disciples. So the commandment of God is of Jesus is abide in me. He said, every branch that beareth uh, that beareth fruit, that beareth not fruit, it's taken away. And every branch that bear fruit, it purges that it brings forth fruit. Number one. One thing is uh, Christ is saying is that if a man abides not in me, he says he is cast forth as a branch and is with and men do gather them. So the 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 a tree without fruit is uh to men is useless to men, is it not it? Because that is what men look after in fruit. We say the glory of the fruit of the tree is to bear fruits. And it is the fruit that attracts men, that feed the people, the animals, the food, the community that they look after on the fruit. Do you remember that tree? When Jesus was passing by and he saw the tree full of leaves and he got there, there was no fruit to, to eat. It caused that fruit. So when your life is a tree, like a tree that is bearing fruit. Men will love it because that is where every year we know in our village, uh, our people didn't grow in a village. We grew up in a village. In a village where uh, there's, there, were, there are some particular trees that we knew. Eh? The ma mango tree, we know where uh, the, some mango trees are. Every year, we as children will always go to that direction when it is time to get fruit. Do you understand? I know you people have a lot of uh, fruits in the in the shops. You don't go, you don't seek for free ones. But in those days, we grew up with free, free, free fruits. So the whole community, they know it. There, there are some very big trees. And people in the community, they know it. So if somebody will by mistake come and say, maybe it needs, we use firewood in Africa. We don't use firewood there. And somebody needs firewood and goes to the tree that is maybe a mango tree that the whole society depends on and wants to cut part of it for firewood. What will happen? The person is seeking for the trouble of the whole community. You understand? So, if your life is like a fruitful tree that the community depends on, definitely, even the men of the community will defend your life. God will raise men to defend your life. But if your life is like a tree that is not bearing the right fruit, that's what Jesus is saying. Look at verse, verse, verse. Uh, Verse 6. He said, If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. And men, ordinary men, will come and gather that tree. And nobody will say anything. Because it has not been useful to them. You understand? Look at what Jesus said in verse 2. He said, Every branch that Beareth not fruit, he taketh away. But every branch that beareth fruit, he purges, he purges it, that it may bring forth much fruit. So if your life is not a kind of tree that bears fruit that the society depends on, then it's of no use. Then 
when people come, when energy comes to attack that fruit or that tree, people will not stand up. They'll just be looking. They will, has it made any benefit to us? But if your life is like that tree that bears fruit, and anybody that raises something against it, the whole community, God will raise men to fight for your life. That is what it means to bear fruit. God expects us to bear fruit. I want to give an example from the scriptures of a life that bears fruit. And how people stood and said, no, this tree that is bearing this fruit must not be cut down. And they said, the whole society rose up and said, no, it can't be cut down. It must, nobody must touch this tree. I want us to open our Bibles to the book of Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, verse 36, from 36 to 41. Acts 9, 36 to 31. So, the Bible is talking about this woman. He said, Now, there was at Joppa a certain disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and harm seeds, which she did. This woman was loaded with fruits. Her life was loaded with fruits. And it came to pass in those days that she was sick. Sickness wanted to take this, the, the tree that the whole society depend on. It was a sickness that came to attack this woman. And the Bible says she died. Whom when they had washed and laid her in the upper chamber, for as much as Lida was near to Joppa, and the disciples had, had heard that Peter was there, and they said unto him two men, desiring him that he would not delay to come to them. Then Peter arose and went with them, and when he was come, they brought him, uh, they brought him unto the upper chamber, and all the widows stood by him weeping. And showing the coats and garments which Dorcas made, which uh, while she was with them, but Peter put them uh, them all forth and knelt and kneeled down and prayed, turning on uh, turning him to the body and said, Tabitha, arise! And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. Can you understand the the the, the story of this woman? It was a woman that the whole society depended upon the fruit that her life was bearing. And sickness came to take this woman away. And the whole society rose up and said, no, you can't take this woman. They brought all the fruits. They said, look at this fruit. Look at that fruit. And God, had, because men stood and said, no. God himself stood and answered unto men. And I'm telling you, brethren, when your life is like a fruitful tree, even men will rise up to fight for your life. Apart from God also arising to say no. This one is a vessel unto me. So we saw it. The Bible says that let your good works be, be so let your let, let let your light so shine before men that men will see your good works and glorify your father who has made you like that. They will be glorifying your father who has fashioned you to be a fruitful tree. We will, we will still talk about the fruits and the importance of fruits definitely to, to men. 
fruits are things that bring life to men. You understand? And apart from just eating, the aroma of fruit, some fruits are very aromatic. You can hear the scent like from a far distance. Eh? The, the, which kind of fruit smells so much? Mango. Mango smells more, much, but there are some fruits that smell more than, than mango. Oranges, yeah. Uh -huh, pineapple. I think uh, uh, I, I can't remember some other kinds of. Tangerine, okay. Yeah. So, some fruits are very, very aromatic. You, from distance, you will hear the smell of it. So God is saying, your life to be productive, to produce fruits, is that people around you should be able to smell good things from your life. Good things, even from distance. When they are near you, what do they see? They want to see and see the goodness of God in your life. They want to smell it from alive, uh, afar off. You, are, you go to church. You are... Uh, you said you know Jesus. What is the aroma that is coming out of your life? What ministration does it do to people around you? They want to see that fruit. They want to taste it. They want to smell it from your life. So let your life so shine. Let your light so shine. When your life is producing fruit, even God will stand to defend your life. Some things we don't need to pray for. You don't need long prayers for some things. Because God himself knows that this is a life of service. When God knows that your life is a life of service, he will defend your life. No ordinary sickness, no ordinary man will come to gather you to come and cook, fire, cook food. God will never allow that. We are talking about uh, enemies. They say there are enemies, there are enemies. It's not important for you to be thinking of the enemies. It's more important for you to abide in Christ. When you abide in Christ and you are living with Christ and an enemy comes to say, I want to attack him, it's God himself that will rise up to defend your life. Look at what the Bible says in John 15 verse 2. Where we have read. He said, every branch in me that beareth not fruit, it taketh away. That is, when they are taking it away, God himself looked like un, un, unaffected. God didn't care. You understand? He said, but every branch that beareth fruit, he put, God himself purges it. He cleanses it. It defends it. You know when you are purging a fruit, you put fertilizer, you put many things, seed, so that this fruit, you want it to, to grow and produce more. That is what it means. You prune it. We prune. Uh, when you prune, that is the dead parts of the, the tree, you take it away, you cut it off. That's pruning in agriculture. So, so that that true root tree will now produce live branches that will bear much fruit. So he said, every branch that bear fruit, I purge it. I take care of it. God himself takes care of you when your life is bearing fruit. So it is important that your life bears fruit. It is important that your life produces the aroma that will attract men unto your God. So it is the work of God. I'm, I want you to know that it is not the work of the branch to, to, to produce, to, it, is, it is the responsibility of the, the branch, the, 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 the vine, the vine, to bring forth. All the branch needs to, is to attach to the, to the vine. You understand? And then it will be very uh, productive. So be in Christ. Abide in Christ. And I want you to know something that a fruit that is a tree that is bearing fruit is a life of sacrifice. The fruit is not for the tree. Is it for the tree to eat? <laughs> the tree doesn't need the fruit. And when men come to gather the, the, the fruit, sometimes they harm the tree. You know, plucking can also harm the is a wound. 
it creates a wound. And sometimes when you pluck the fruit, you see something white coming out. You understand? The, the, the tree is bleeding. <laughs> and the sap, we call it sap. But it's bleeding. So, the life of producing fruit is a life of sacrifice. It's a life of sacrifice. Sometimes it's not what you eat. It's not what you need. It's just for the man. So when the tree is producing the fruit, he's not thinking of himself. He's thinking of the society, the community. And when somebody comes to attack the tree, it's the community that the tree is feeding that will rise and say, no, you can't touch this tree. You can't. Because it's a tree that serves us in this village. You can't. So let your life be so important to God that even God himself will rise to defend you anywhere. You don't need to defend yourself. You don't need to pray much prayers sometimes when you are serving. Because even God and men will rise up to defend your life. And angels, God sends angels to defend his people. He sends angels to defend his, his own. We've seen even Jesus himself. We, don't, we won't go deep into that. That Even when Jesus was being tempted, the Bible says an angel came to minister unto him. And on two occasions. So the same thing. We remember Daniel. When Daniel was cast into the, into the den of lion. He said, the king would, could not sleep. The king went there and said, Daniel, did your God whom you serve continually, was he able to deliver you? He said, my God sent his angels to close the mouth of the lions and they could not harm me. So God will send angels to be on assignment concerning you when you are a fruitful tree. But be a fruitful tree. And that is the prayer this year, Lord. Let my life bear fruits that men would depend upon. And I said, it's a sacrifice. Sometimes you pay for it. Sometimes you, 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 it's something you, 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 you want, you, it denies you of your sleep because you want to serve men. Because you want to do the service of God. It, you deny yourself of your sleep. You deny of your, yourself of your finance. Of your, of your own pleasure. I say it's a life of sacrifice. Hebrews 6.10. Hebrews 6.10. I will read that passage. It said, For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed towards his name, listing. He said, this thing is very important. He said, for God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love, which you have showed towards his name. When you stand for the name of God, even when it is not convenient, he said, God is not an unrighteous person to forget such work and labor of love. He said, in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. When you do it, like I've said before, that you don't see Christ, but you see Christ in me. If you want to honor Christ and you honor Christ in me, you understand? You do it to any of these little ones. It is not, you will not see Christ face to face. But you can see Christ in, our, we can see Christ in ourselves. And Jesus said, if you give a cup of water in my name to these little ones in my name, because of me, you did it. Say you will not lose your reward. So you can only serve Christ in ourselves. By me laying down my life for my brethren. To serve you. That is when I am serving Christ. The Lord will give us understanding. I want us to pray for ourselves this morning. 
and ask God, make my life a fruitful tree. It may cost you some sacrifices. It may cost you doing some things or not doing some things. But you want to say, God, help me. Let my life be a sacrifice, a fruitful tree that the community where I live will depend on in the name of Jesus. Pray for yourself this morning. We have said that if your life is a fruitful tree, some things you don't need to pray for. Because even before you pray for it, there are people that God has raised to stand up for your life. And God even sent angels to come and defend you. You will just see that things are running smoothly. You don't know what is done in the secret. The Bible says that God himself purges those fruit trees that are producing fruit so that they can bear more. So the same thing. God will be pruning you, will be doing this, will be, will be putting fertilizer there so that you can grow and grow better and produce more fruit. Brethren, the Lord is seeking such sacrifices. We saw the life of Dorcas, a fruitful tree. And the whole community stood up and said, no, sickness, you cannot take this woman away. Is the one that is bearing all these fruits that we see. So the same thing. The Lord will defend your life in the name of Jesus. Just be a fruitful tree. Abide in Christ. If you are here and you have not given your life to Christ and you have not known him, and you want to give your life to Christ this morning, you want to abide in Christ, you want to be a fruitful tree. The first step is accepting Jesus into your life. Jesus said, abide in me and I in you. That is the first step to walking with God. And you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? You can raise your hands and I will pray with you this morning. If you are here, you want that opportunity, I will give you the chance. And you want to, Jesus to come into you and live and abide in you. There is that power that is here this morning. He said, I stand at the door and I, and I knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and I will hit with you. Jesus is a loving God. He wants to come into your life and live with you. And you will have peace evermore. Thank you, Lord. If you want to accept Jesus, I will give you the chance this morning. You can raise up your hands and I will pray with you. You want Jesus to come into your life. So if you want to do that, I will pray with you this morning. And your life will never remain the same. You will be a fruitful tree in the house of the Lord. If you want to take that decision, you have not taken it before. You can raise up your hands and we are here to pray for you and to minister to you. And God will do something definite in your life. And if you want to pray that prayer, I will just lead in a, yes, thank you, Jesus, for that hand. So, and you pray this prayer uh, after me. If you still want to join, uh, join, please raise up your hands. I'm here. We are here to pray with you. Just pray this prayer after me. You can pray it in your heart and say, God, Lord Jesus, just say after me, Lord Jesus. I come unto you this morning. I've heard your word that Lord, you died for me and you paid the price for my sin and you shed your blood for me. Please, Lord, forgive all my sins this morning. I believe you and I come unto you. Accept me, O oh God. And take me as your child from today. Let your blood cleanse me and make me yours forever. And let me serve you forever in the mighty name of Jesus. I give my life unto you. Take my life and use it for your glory. 
in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for as many as have made these decisions, that Lord, today you will accept them. You will take them in. From today, let your presence make a difference in their lives. That when they look back, they will see a difference. They will see the glory of God in their lives from today. In the name of Jesus. As many as have made this decision in their hearts. And they have prayed this prayer. Let there be a transformation in their lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Father. In Jesus name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. I was glad when they said. Let us come to the house of the Lord. I don't know about you, but, you know, 